Welcome back, everyone, to the last expedition match for today. By request, a lobster pot, but it was a long one, so we're going to be running at double speed for as long as I can. What the heck is going on? Oh, I know what the heck's going on. Hang on one sec. Need to deal with the thing. Oops. No! Oh, oh, not you. Yeah, sorry. I need that one. Okay. Sorry about that. Don't mind the man behind the curtain. Let's continue. What the heck? What is with the mini-map on this map? Anyway, so lobster pot big enough that I don't even know how I'm going to be able to list out the players, but... Apparently the mini-map's just not going to want to work. Okay, I would... Why in the world? Sorry, that's bugging me. Alright, so, prestige. 13v12. I don't understand the logic. This is a 1v1 to 3v3 map, by the way. But I thought it'd be funny to look at what's going on. And so far, the Western team is just absolutely wrecking base. Taking the center quite well. A lot of ogres coming around the side. I feel blind without the minimap. Why is this broken? Well, it's not broken. It's just... Why is it all black? Is this entire map... No, this entire map's... Okay. Dregs. I gotta talk to Dregs about this. Not... Okay, this, this has gotta be me, though. This has gotta be me. Yeah, I'm gonna have to disable the minimap at this point. What am I... How do I do that? Alright, well I guess I'll just dis disable the minimap for now. I feel blind! I don't know how this works. Oh, hey! He's inside- Hey! The wow, that is a very fancy new hunter. I never had a chance to look at it closely. Okay, it looks like crinkled aluminum, but it looks cool! So yeah, Hunter at least been built up. Yeah, so there apparently is potential for sea factory on this map. Oh yeah, there actually is. It's open up in the back. You can, in fact, make ships. So yeah, this is, again, a brand new map. From part of the new rotation. Which is not designed for 12v13. But that seems to be going anyway. Okay, minimap was apparently okay in QA testing. That's strange. Well, now is really not the time to test. I don't know why. That... Actually, you know what? I'm sorry, everyone. You are going to appear behind the curtain at this point. I expect something broke. Wait, what the heck? Why did that not work? Oh, there we go. Alright. That was weird. Back to the game. I'm not sure if that Lua UI reload was successful, to be perfectly honest. I don't think I... No, it wasn't. That was that was a placebo. I guess I just needed to turn the minimap on and off again. Or off and on again. And there we go. Oh, I can see again! Hooray! Alright. Thanks, Dregs. So, back to the game, though. West taking north, east taking south. And a lot of use of ogres, too. And so far, I mean, economy is basically the same. Attrition is about the same. This is... The reason I'm running this at double speed is because its list is taking a long time. And when it takes a long time, it means that you have a lot of these stalemates going on in the center of the map. Though early Lego should break it, you'd think. But yeah, lobster spots tend to have a lot of early stalemates. It's just hard to... Until reclaim comes up to the point that people are getting 200-ish metal or, or overdrive, to the point where people are getting 200-ish metal per team, doesn't really help. Or just the time it takes to build up large-scale striders. Merlin's not a large-scale strider in this context. I'm talking, like, paladin, detriment, that kind of thing. Once it gets to that point, then yeah, the game starts to become decisive. But 
in the meantime, this is basically just a laning phase. It really is. It's all just a matter of trying to get resources here and there, get extra reclaim, keep your units alive while killing your opponents, that kind of thing, which is kind of a futile effort, but you, know, you can try. Actually, come to think of it, the north side here, the western team, is is doing a good job pushing pressure onto these early factories. This is actually a big deal. These firewalkers come in here, they, if they take out a couple of factories, that is going to massively reduce the ability for the eastern team to take the north side. And they aren't really taking the south side well either, so for now, it's not working. Oh, wow. That is a cool team color! I've never seen that team color before. Anyhow. <laughs> that's like the the tenth player on blue team team color. I'm getting distracted. Sorry, this game is... This is an absolutely chaotic mess, so I'm not going to be commenting... The way I would for 1v1. It's not going to be the you know, an analytical commentary. It is going to be shiny squirrel. I don't... Hey, cool thing over here. Like, it's... I'm not going to be doing super coaching commentary just because there's too much going on. And again, this is, like I said, kind of the laning phase. It's all a matter of gaining some territory before the big striders come out. Granted, it looks like we already have a few people who decided just to ditch completely, which not surprising. Probably a technical problem on their end. So the Eastern team does have this southern center bit more or less to them. The Western team taking the north center did take out Filler's factory. Or sorry, not Filler's factory, took out someone else's took out put us's factory. That's one fewer factor for the eastern side, and that's not one for your commander, though. Just one for your factory. With that, there is a lot... Oh. Dommy's coming in here. Dommy's trying to turn things around. This could open things up at the south side. The western team does have a slight economic advantage, and they do have a large attrition advantage. That Merlin should have... Up oh, no, that Merlin is still being... There's got to be more than one Merlin. There's got to be more than one. Nope. Nope, that's not that. There's more than one more. That's what I thought. Oh right, I can't. I'm zoomed out. No, never mind. There was just the one Merlin. Okay. So now the eastern team, having lost that southern side and basically losing the northern side, the western team is definitely having an advantage. Pretty well handed to them. Well, another factory is going to go down. That is Filler's factory down. My commentary was correct. Just time shifted. The northeast corner is basically lost. Of course, the super cool team color coming in here from from Pizza. Seriously, that silver team color looks amazing. I'm not sure why. It just it just really works. I guess because it does fit the metal aesthetic of the rest of the units. It doesn't clash. Like we've heard this dark green also looks good, but I just like this is also my favorite color, so the dark green. Did you learn something about me? That is my favorite color. But yeah, I guess this is more just sort of a general Like it's I mean so okay, it's nice silver chrome color. Nothing nothing wrong with silver chrome. Just fits the mechanical aesthetic. But Despite not fitting the aesthetic quite so well, actually I prefer this this shade of pink does work on these units. But despite not fitting the aesthetic quite as well, though still looking pretty cool. So that, the western side is wrecking face. The Merlin is up. And is really not doing all that much? Where is that Merlin? Oh there it is. No, the Merlin's doing a lot. Yeah, boom beat. Boom, me and the Merlin. Wiping out the south, that south base. Same time, though, the north side has been pushed back. Leeko's coming in here along with Firewalkers. Opening up the north side. On top of that, cloaked Redbacks. A little bit of a low-cost solution in such a large game. But if it works, then, hey, why not? Considering how far behind the eastern team is in attrition. Though they have, they have closed the gap by 5,000 metal since the last time I checked. Ooh. Commander dead. 
good ultimatum use there. That opens up something. Leo coming in here making sure that it's not quite as open as it looks. But wow, this is... The Southern Sud still working out, but the Eastern, Eastern team, they're closed the gap. Only 2,500 metal down in terms of attrition. And their economic power is ahead. I like 20, 30 metal per second. And granted, a lot of that's reclaim, but it's a team game. It's all reclaim. <laughs> it's, there, it, static economy is not a factor in team games, especially on a map this small. What the heck is we building up here, though? Like an army of boys or dom- Oh, cloaked dommies, actually. That's not a bad idea. Bundle of coming here from Drapizza House in the back. And Athena just probably going to go for sneaky build plays over in the back, I would guess. Though, hard to be sure. Scythe coming around here, taking a few wind generators, but that's not going to really be enough. I mean, it cuts off a low overdrive line. Okay, that's actually probably not a bad idea. Overdrive is also very important, but didn't really do enough damage to make a significant difference. Like, not in the order of what Reclaim is going to provide. Not necessarily of the dead size, just in general. There's a lot of Reclaim on the map. Or there was. Oh, 500 over here. Really, most of it's over on the south side, and that is something the Western team has better control over. Especially with the Merlin coming in here. Minotaurs and Ogres maintaining on-the-ground presence. Just need to get a few workers in here. Ah, it's Constable. There it is. Get that Constable in there. Build up with the can, and that should be enough. So at this point, Eastern team is starting to fall behind on the reclaim. All the reclaim is inside the West team's base, or West team's control. And indeed, West team is doing everything they can to take it. The Eastern team does have a few hundred metal reclaim over to the north. It's not really for them. They have, however, closed out the attrition gap. That's something that works. Well, okay, Dregs in the chat. Funny out that it's such a low metal map. But like, Dregs. Oh, no, you weren't here. No, you're not. Oh, right, I forgot. You weren't. Okay, so. This. I mean, Dregs, you might have seen this. But way back in the day, like four or five years ago ish, the popular map for Lobster Pot games was Icy Run. I mean, it was actually pointed out in the chat at the very beginning of this replay. In the game chat. Icy Run 20v20 was a thing. Icy Run has, I think, a grand total of 12 two-metal metal extractors across the entire map for both players. It is a famine map in a 1v1 scenario, and people were playing, like, 20v20. The economy was entirely commanders and reclaim. There was no static metal economy. It might as well have had no metal spots whatsoever. I am not joking. Icy Run was like ludicrously popular for large team maps. Or ludicrously popular in general, despite how tiny it was. It really was not a map designed for 0k. Like, it was a map designed for a game that had metal makers. Like early total annihilation or total annihilation, early early complete annihilation, maybe early balance annihilation. Like it was it was not meant for modern 0k where your economy is determined largely by territory and secondarily by Reclaim, and you basically only have passive economy if you have the territory to support it through Overdrive. Icy Run didn't do that. But then again, like I said, the commander income, that was a thing. People just used that, and it would just, like, have two or three players assist build a factory to build stuff in order to pool those resources from the commander income into units that would then be used, and then you have Reclaim afterwards, and it was... I mean, it was about as of use. It was about as well designed as it sounds, but people played it. I think the main reason was because of the fact that Icy Run was a very simple map. It's a small map. It had very basic geometry. It didn't have or actually done basic geometry. It's really crinkled mountains, but other than that, didn't really have objects or anything. So it was easy for the potato PCs to run. But also, just when you're playing 20 v 20, every PC is a potato PC. So, you want to have the simple maps in order for that to work. It's actually kind of the the paradox of large team games, is that when you want to have a large team game, the best map to play it on is a large map. Something that's, you know, 16 by 16, 20 by 20, 24 by 24, and has room for everyone to grow and expand and build out. 
but that's also much harder on the CPU and the GPU. So for most people playing it, because the more people you have in the game, the more likely any one of those players is going to have a, a less capable PC, then it's harder to get people to actually play on those maps since more and more players are going to lag out the larger the map is. So you end up getting the smaller maps that aren't great for big team games because the large maps that are great for big team games are logistically very difficult to play big team games on with enough players whose computers can actually play on those maps without having massive performance issues. And no, it wasn't Econ from Constructor. Constructor Econ was a thing, but it was not. No, it was Reclaim and Commanders. That was it. And Overdrive. It was, there was some Overdrive. It was usually like you had one metal extractor and a couple Singularity reactors on Overdrive. Really? You're surprised I don't see... Okay, so Drake's pointing out in the chat that they're surprised I don't see a Skyla. I'm not. Because... Who builds a Skyla? Like, I, I mean, it'd be cool. Or still have whatever. It'd be cool. I don't see it built very often, even in, in with a few large team games I do cast. And I don't think it's going to be the first thing on people's minds, especially since, I mean, yeah, it's, okay, but it's really useful because, you know, being able to hit essentially large scale artillery, tank nuke across the entire map would be amazing. But I don't think people are going to think about that. It'd be, it'd be amazing to use, but it's just not likely to happen. Not to mention the fact that this terraform is kind of locked off where the C maps C units can go. And at the same time, we have Eastern Team coming in here, though. So, not not Scylla, but it's something. Sirens. Sirens and... Of course, there's Sirens and... I can't remember the name. Zephyrs. Coming along the side here. And nice, really nice play here. The bottom side was terraformed out. I believe that was by West Team. But the north side was not. And with that... The West team is being completely wrecked from behind. There is nothing to stop this. I mean, that Scylla, yeah, it's like, you're not entirely wrong that something in the back for C would have been a good idea, but it's too little too late now. I mean, this Strider up's dead for one thing. I mean, a Scylla from the Eastern team, that would make sense. Although one other thing to bear in mind is that Scyllas do cost 3,000, and the thing about team games is that yeah, the metal, it's shared in the spectator view, but when you're actually playing it, it's its kind of shared, but it's kind of not. So for each player, they're looking at, you know, 11, 12 metal per second. They're not looking at 100 metal per second. It's a little bit harder to be convinced that it's a good idea to go for big, expensive strider units. Unless they had a plan for it, I don't know, maybe there's people in voice chat that are going, Hey, build this or build that or whatever. I mean, I'm sure the West team is screaming in voice chat. They just lost a bunch of their factories. They lost the Strider hub. They got completely blindsided from the sea. Apparently thinking the sea was a formality. And there's still an ultimatum back here. But find something useful, just bam, dead. And the Eastern team, yeah, they've... Well, they're still behind in attrition, though. Still 10,000 metal behind. I mean, granted, it's a tiny amount relative, but still 10,000 metal behind on attrition. I mean, tiny amount relative to the total amount in the entire game, but in terms of this part of the game, I don't think it's that. No, Army Valley is about. No, Army Valley is still better for East. Yeah, they don't care. Their economy, their economy strength is so much higher than West Team. Their, their economy is so much stronger than the West Team that the attrition simply does not matter. Granted, the pork is so strong that I don't know how much matters either way because it's all now a matter of artillery. So attrition isn't so as important as where that attrition is, like where the units are actually placed. Jack coming in. Not bad use of jacks. Getting rid of some of the energy. Honestly, it's more a question of where are these jacks going to end up, and the answer is the scrap heap. Well... So it goes. I mean, there was already a very successful raid over to the back side of the map on the western side a few minutes ago. I guess beggars can't be choosers. Kind of curious what we're seeing for cloak units. Really? Okay, both sides. Both sides using cloak units. So thinking, was it just the eastern team using cloak? Actually, the eastern team is not using very many cloaked either. 
few cloaked lances, and that's about it. Strider hub has been rebuilt, not really being used for any striders at the moment. The Athena is up, but I'm not seeing any sneaky builds, and I don't... Yeah, I don't see that happening. It doesn't look like that's that's the approach being gone for. Well, Singularity is up. Eastern team using that for the re for the overdrive. Once this pylon is up, Eastern team's overdrive is going to go through the roof. Or not? Really? Oh no, there it is. Yeah, there's just their static economy is kind of low. I mean, that is the thing with big team games like this is that you're total metal per second actually goes down over time, especially on small maps, because it's so dependent on the commanders, and over time the commanders die. But, only so much reclaim exists, and the overdrive I mean, goes up infinitely theoretically, but it has diminishing returns pretty fast. So overall, this is actually it gets, surprisingly a weaker economy over time. However, at the same time, there's also much, much larger armies. I see the army value. 43,000 for Western team. They've overtaken the Eastern team at 30, 35,000. So now the Western team actually able to win out from the attrition. Has that Paladin up as well. That's what I was talking about. Although, to be fair, Funnel Web is also... Well, Funnel Web's kind of big. Paladin's where I draw the line for big striders. Ooh, Athena coming in and... Are they resin units? Looks like... Ironically, it won't matter. They're all going to die. But, you know, that was a thing. That could have been. Same time, was that... What the heck just... Oh, Thunderbird came around. That explains it. It's like, what in the wall just blew up that funnel web? No, nah, there's the dog and coming in here. As mentioned in the chat. FFC. Reminiscing about Juggernaut rushes. Sumo is the time. But, yeah, not gonna happen so much here. I mean, this map is not designed for this many players, but it is still a 3v3 map. Like, it's not like Icy Run, which is maybe a 1v1 map. Not really sure how many players. I, honestly, Icy Run feels like a famine map for 1v1, so I don't know. Chocolate coming in here. Good choice. Good way to take care of a lot of these shields. And just in general, you know, stun out the army and such. The Eastern team is really established a position for themselves. They are behind attrition wise. A lot of it's the paladin. If that paladin goes down, then army value is going to be pretty well flipped. At the 10,000, the army value is that paladin. And there's the first shock Lee. Or was it? I thought it was. No, it wasn't the first shock Lee. It was just another Inferno. My bad. Now, yeah, Western team going for the one big push with the Paladin. Might be able to take this out, actually. I mean, you have the Phantoms coming in here. Paladin's got 3,000 HP. A lot of Leekos up here as well. There's air pads for the Leekos. Yeah, that's... That's... There it is! Paladin taken out. What in the world even... Were those... That wasn't the Leekos, was it? It looked like... Scuttles or something. No, it must have been the, must have been the Leekos. Unfortunately, since I am running it fast, it's a little hard to tell sometimes. No, I don't see any corpses of things like... Scuttles. Yeah, with that, though, Eastern team, yeah, they basically... Oops. They basically opened things back up again. Evened out the army values, and... Another raid coming around the side, this time with scallops far more successful than the last one. Just walking around the edge and... Okay, now I realize the genius of these ramps. This is actually really cool, because... Okay, so it, it's more relevant in 1v1, because you could have 
drops. But basically the way these ramps are set up... Oh, it's hard to sell here because I've been so beaten down. But the way the ramps are set up, if you look at some of the areas that are less beaten down, there's a path straight into the back of your opponent's base. It's kind of like a drop, but they could theoretically spot it. I mean, there's a next area here where his radar shadow will probably stop them from seeing it. Actually, quite a lot of it, radar shadow will stop them from seeing. If they don't put radar up here, essentially you could use a drop without using drop ships, which is a good idea because at least in 1v1, it's kind of hard to get gunship and another factory relative to just having one factory. So you can do pseudo drops on this map just by using these back ramps. I like that. That's a really cool design feature. I I don't think any map has ever... I can't think of any maps that's done that. I mean, probably there are maps that have done that in less obvious ways. But this one is clearly designed around the idea of allowing you to walk units into your opponent's main base if they're not careful. They don't have radar up here or otherwise keep some attention on this top ridge. So that's a, that's a very nice design idea. And I can't say I'm surprised. Dregs has been working on these maps for a while. They've got... Well, they've both been working on these maps for a while. And also, if anyone remembers Shifting Sands, I believe that was them as well. They definitely made Shifting Sands too and Jurassic Sands. Which was designed around how to make the map work for all 0k factories. Because the dirty little secret about 0k is that most of the maps played for 0k were designed for balance annihilation or complete annihilation or evolution rts actually and they weren't designed for zero k so these maps are designed for zero k and that's the thing that drags has been doing for a while has been designing maps specifically for zero k designing maps around making sure all the factories can have some equal footing and making sure that all the different tactics that can be done that have some relevant air elements and also, in this case, just adding design features that simply aren't present in the more naturalistic maps that tend to come up in Total Annihilation and spiritual successors or mod successors, like BA, CA, ZK. Which means that this is one of the first sets of maps. Like, this is a part of a set of eight maps, two by Acronym, six by Drex, that are designed from scratch, except for Mech and Sony, which is more just modified. Although that was also designed from scratch for 0k in the first place. By sprung but yeah designed for zero k so i'm really excited to see how game's going to play out on maps that are designed for zero k specifically and also that are just have very cool different approaches to how to make maps like how to how to arrange different features how to make the different elements in the map interact with each other how to position terrain like shifting sands was designed to let every factor shine but it was an early attempt and suffered a bit from having a laney feel because it's very box design like it was very much like this area is for spiders this area is for amp boss this area is for cloaky or this area is for hover it was very it was like each lane had like one or two matches that would work for it shifting sands 2 and jurassic sands are much more integrated and the rest of these maps just generally I mean, granted, this wouldn't be a good spider map, but for the most part, the rest of these maps are just designed around being, like, relatively good choices for a wide range of maps. Or, sorry, wide range of factories. Particularly, in this case, for a wide range of aquatic factories. Oh, Drake's pointing out in the chat that the inspiration for this map was Onyx Cauldron. I can see it with the lake in the center, though... Despite the fact that I've always had a soft spot for Onyx Cauldron, I prefer this. Like, the, the Onyx Cauldron lake had a bit of a problem of dominating the center and making it really difficult to have any real movement around the center that wasn't through Ampbots or Hovers. This lake still allows for a lot of room for Ampbots and Hovers to shine, but doesn't require them quite the same way. There's still room around it that you can still run around, don't have to worry. The lake is useful, but it's not dominating. It's good balance there. Also, that that was done in three weeks? Oh, the mountains! Really? Okay, I saw the lake for Honest Cauldron, but I I guess I could see the mountains? Oh, I see. Yeah, fair point. Okay, Honest Cauldron 
Onyx Cauldron has mountains along the side that would allow you to do a kind of pseudo drop as well, at least for spiders. But those weren't so obvious because of the fact that it's it was like a bunch of squares. It was, it was like a bunch of squares that were offset at seemingly cha at chaotic angles or chaotic heights from each other. It was it was really good. It was beautiful to look at. It wasn't clear that you could actually use that to do pseudo airdrops outside of with spiders. But yeah, three weeks? Like, that's amazing. You must have been, like, were you just working full time on these or what? Because that's, like, I got it. Like, what was your workflow? Was this just all GIMP and or Photoshop and doing the color maps directly, or were you using Spring Map Edit or or Springboard? I mean, judging by the height maps, I expect you were. This map was done in Photoshop or GIMP. Like, it must have been. It's just this. The these are very precise. This looks like a drawing tool. But the more naturalistic maps, like Jurassic Sands, or just in general, the set up stuff, all Photoshop. Oh, wow. You must have absolute boatloads of RAM then. Because, man, I remember I tried playing around a bit with, like, when I made iced coffee, I had a hard, I think I had 16 gigs of RAM at the time. And I was running low on RAM, and that was an 8x8 map. And I could not hold it all in GIMP. It was just, I think, yeah, it was bogging down my system trying to edit that map. Wow. Oh yeah, Filter Forge. You showed me Filter Forge before for the textures. That's cool. I mean, right now I have 64 gigs of RAM. I, I got extra RAM because I needed it. I was like, 16 gigs was simply not enough for even some of my more everyday tasks. Granted, everyday tasks include playing Quake Champions, and that game just is a ram hog, so, yeah. <laughs> that was basically why. But it's totally worth it. 64 gigs of ram is great, actually. Considering maybe I should consider... I don't know. I love making maps. I just... I've been busy. I mean, I haven't been even streaming very much recently, so, yeah. Anyway, back to the game, though. Got a bit of a tangent. East team... Still behind on attrition. How are they for army value? I had an armor valley behind an attrition, still around the 40,000 mark. Funnel webs coming around. Okay, I like this. Should point out. The fleas patrolling around the. Like, the fleas guarding the funnel web, making sure the ultimatum can't get in. That is smart. That is, that is a really cool tactic. Just, it's also really simple. You just literally hit guard on the fleas, drag a circle with the funnel web as the center, and they'll just circle around forever. Very smart thinking, and yeah, it stops all the stops all the widows from wrecking base. Widows are ultimatum. That both of them are problems. And nuke. Shockley on the anti nuke, allowing the nuke to hit the funnel web. And did it do anything? Yeah, it. it well, it wrecked the ground for sure. Didn't really do. I mean, did, I think it killed one of the funnel webs. Hard to tell. Yeah, not really the best position for it. How many nukes are up, though? Where is that? Ooh, ultimatum coming in here. Not managing to do too Wait, where's the other ultimatum? Oh, I see. We're going to tear down this wall, are we? I don't know why you just don't bring a couple conches over here. Just deconstruct the wall, but whatever. When all you have is an ultimatum, everything is a D-gun target. Where is that trinity? Nuke, 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 nuke. No, that's just thing use. Where is the nuke symbol? It was a trinity, right? It wasn't... Uh, Silla, no, Silla's Tack Nuke. What's the one that's not Tack Nuke? No, no, it is just Tack Nuke. It is Scylla. Wait, no, 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 no. This is not using Tack Nukes. This is using Nukes. Tactically, I think. There's not, like, I don't think it's Aeos's that it makes, is it? 
No, it is Aosis. Never mind. No, it does build Aosis. Oh! No, that's planes. Oh, yeah, the new plane plate. Oh, there's the Trinity. How did I miss that? Alright, well, another nuke down, I think. Oh, the anti nuke has been destroyed. There's a nuke doing. A okay, that's game ending damage. That is game ending damage right there. Yeah, we have a resign coming in. That that's that's game. That's it. 65 to 120 on metal. South side is destroyed. Westin throws in the towel. That was a lobster pot game at two times speed. On prestige. Let's see how this map was wrecked. Wow. I mean, I guess when you make a 0k map, you know it's going to get beaten down and banged up during the course of a game. But sheesh, that's a... Uh, that's destruction, all right. All righty. Well. Cool. So, yeah, that was that. <laughs> Dregs in chat. My baby! It's fine. It'll reset the next game. It's only a scratch. Wow, Eastern team had just a massive metal use advantage the entire game. Metal income, too. Was, army value was a little iffy, but for the most part, Eastern team just... Other than the beginning, the other first third of the game where I was, you know, this weird dominatrix thing going back and forth and the Western team took out the north side, Eastern team had the advantage pretty well consistently. Well done, Eastern team. Okay, excess is useless. <laughs> no excess means nothing. It, when you're dealing with team games, excess just transferred to teammates, so if one player is accessing, another player can take advantage of it. So yeah, that was that, so... You're welcome, Saren Rado, or Saren Toretto, for that. Were they in this game? Were they watching this game? I, I don't know. I legit don't know if they were watching this game. And hitting tab doesn't give me that. Okay, whatever. So yeah, that was that. Really? Tab doesn't... Weird. Your choice scoreboard. Maybe I broke that binding. Anyway, that is that. Thank you for watching. Interesting game. I mean, mostly just a fun way to chat, honestly, more than anything, because that's lobster pots. You know, there's there's moments, but for the most part, it's just banging against pork in the center of the map for days. It, that's It's kind of fun to watch the explosions, and sometimes the cool plays happen. But, yeah, moment-to-moment -moment commentary is not going to be all that effective. <laughs> What do you see? Hilarity ratchet they have? 1.6k worth? Yeah, it's a pretty average number. Alright, well, anyway, that is that. So, thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.